Hi, Amy with Experience the Quilt. In part one, I taught you how to make this cute art quilt thank you card and how to assemble it. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to add the painterly effects, the embellishing. And I want you to know, I notice it's been a while that this is a three part series and part two should have been out a long time ago. We were on a trip out to Missouri Star Quilts. And that is where I gave this quilt away. So I don't have it with me and it's on my iPad right now. I also want you to know we are getting better cameras. So hang in there. Welcome to Experience the Quilt. We are a long arm quilting business based in the Boise, Idaho area. You can drop off or ship your quilts so that we can finish them for you. We quilt all sizes, no extra charge for batting or thread. Sign up for 15% off with your first order at experiencethequilt.com. Okay, so I'm done placing my fabric and it's looking beautiful, but it is not done. Now the fun part comes where we add painting and embellishing to make it just come alive. One thing that I love to have on hand is colored pencils. And I like to have scraps of what I put in my in here so that I can test it first. Because one thing that's always good is to test, okay, what if I wanted her cheeks to be rosy, which I haven't decided if I'm gonna do yet, because it isn't in the picture, but I can color with the colored pencil and go, oh, I like that, I like that effect, you know? So it's really good to test it on the fabric that you have. If you're not quite sure, I can see here that my little sleeve is a little wonky. I didn't see that before. It must have been tucked under the freezer paper. So I'm gonna pull up, I'd rather have the upper sleeve be over the lower sleeve because that would make more sense unless this were a glove, but she does not have a glove on. So I'm gonna tuck and I'm gonna move that fabric where I want it. And now I'm gonna press that again. So see how easy that was to like lift up that misty fuse and change that layer. It's a little thing, but it made a difference. I also cut the face and the neck separately. I didn't have to, but I did because I wanted to make sure that I remembered that that's where the chin was and I want to give it a little bit of shadow there. Her hat is a little obtrusive right there. So I may just take, I have these little applique scissors that are handy. They're uh, Karen K. Buckley ones. And I can just kind of clip away that hat a little bit. Um, because really that, that head, that face should be on top of the hat and I don't have it that way. Um, I did the head first. So I'm kind of clipping that hat away just to trim it up and I don't think it'll really matter. I'm being a little picky, but. So some things I'm going to do is add some yarn, some couching, some pretty ribbons, but for right now we're gonna paint. And I have, um, I have Derwent inks, which are really fun that I've just been learning to play with. Yeah. All purpose inks. They're, the brand is Sukineko with a T. Um, I love them. They are so fun to play with and I absolutely enjoy them. Um, they're one of my favorite things to play with. And I think I'm gonna start out with that um, to play with um, doing some sh shadowing yeah, here. Like so I'm going, they, what you, how you use these is with these little fantastic sticks. They are a foam core and they have pointed, and they also have um, a blunt or ball tip. I don't know what, this is called bullet point, excuse me. Um, I like the pointed ones the best. They have both have their purposes, but I tend to use the bullet ones a lot. Um, this is also a good time to place down your pressing sheet on your workspace so that you don't get ink on other things, because these will stain. They're supposed to not be per permanent until you heat set them, but you know, I wouldn't want to risk that. <laughs> so I always try to place a protective surface if I can, especially with something small like this, it's pretty easy. So when you dip them in, I didn't know this for many, many years, but I recently learned this from Sandra Mullen. I'm gonna grab a, a piece of fabric that's a scrap and you take the scrap that you want to use and you just get it to where it, you want it. So you basically take out the ink 
until it's where you want it. So that, when you first dip, that puts a lot of ink in your paint, in your brush. So I'm going to brush it on here till it's the shade I want. And then I'm going to just, I'm going to give this a little shadow. Um, sometimes it helps to leave the, to do this as you go, because you have the freezer paper there to help you. But that's even a little dark, so I'm still going to erase a little bit more. It's, this is called truffle, the color is. Um, it looks quite black. And I want to give this a little shadow. I'm just going to brush it down. Kind of give that a little shadow because these are like the little flares of her skirt coming out. So I've got to iron that down just a little bit better. I'm going to come along here. I kind of like it better the more I do it. Yeah, I like that too. And I'm going to even bring this down. Just give it a little bit of outline. I intend to do some fun beading and stuff along the bottom here, so I'm not going to do a whole lot of painting in there because I want to um, add beads and stuff. I don't think it's going to see be seen much. And we're going to give this a shadow right here because it's the back of her. And now my color is getting lighter because I'm using the ink more, but I want it to not be too dark anyway. I even do it a little bit on that orange, if you can tell. And I want a little bit of an outline here. So to me, I like this better than a, say a permanent marker that would give a really sharp line. I don't want a super sharp line. I want it kind of, I want a little painterly effect, hand drawn effect. So I'm giving it just a little, just a little bit of touch there. And here I'm going to give her some shadow on her belly. I want a little bit of a shadow around here. I kind of just do it around all the pieces. Even her little hand has just the tiniest bit of outline. So I'm going to just give it a little bit of outline. It almost just makes it a little more substantial. I don't know. I kind of like it. I love how long the ink lasts in this. I haven't even dipped it in more than one time. And then I took a lot of the ink out. So you can tell that it, it just really lasts. And I love that. I like that effect. Can you see how pretty that makes it? Of course, I'm going to add a little bit of shadow here and I'm going to couch some hair on here so her hair is not there so it looks a little bit funny right now but it will get a lot better there's a little bit of a shadow here under her hat a little bit kind of go outwards and then of course I need to outline her I'm not super sure I love the floral on her hat but I'm really just going to keep going with it because I like how it ties in the second layer down here and I think it just gives it a bold look. It's kind of fun and I think when I'm done with adding her hair that I'll like it better. Right now it seems a little crazy but I'm going to give her some bright red hair or auburnish hair and so I think once I'm done with that I will probably like it better but if I decide I don't like it I mean, before I couch it, I can take it off. But once I add her hair, it's going to be hard. I'd have to unpick that. So I need to decide if I like it once I get, before I put the hair on. But So I'm just kind of going around each little line. And you could totally do this with thread. You could stitch this and, and, and like outline it with thread. But I like the look of the ink. So I'm done with that. The Derwent inks are not activated until they are touched with water or aloe vera. The water really makes them flow quickly. Um, the aloe vera, since it's thicker, um, I like it because I have a little more control over where I'm going. So I have just a little container like from the dollar store that I put aloe vera in. Actually, a friend from my class this 
spring gave it to me and I'm still using it. So I've got just a little bit of aloe vera on there and I'm going to brush it along my bright red. I don't know if you can see that, sorry. I'm gonna brush it along the bright red right here. So I'm gonna kind of test it to see, ooh, it's really dark. So now I'm gonna kind of just I like that. It adds just a little bit, a little bit of ink right there. If I want a little more, I'll maybe tip, dip my brush in a little more aloe vera and see if I can. And right now, when you first do the aloe vera or the water, it looks super bright. It will lighten a little bit as it dries. So just be aware of that. That's a really bright spot and it will, um, it'll lighten as it dries. So, and I'm gonna get a little more red on my paintbrush, a little more aloe vera, a little more red and kind of brush some of the ink off because I got a lot on there and I didn't want quite that much. So I'm gonna kind of just aloe vera it up here. I'm just kind of playing with it. And I like that about this. This is what I really enjoy. I'm gonna add a little bit of orange to blend it. A little orange and red. I'm just kind of playing here. I don't really know. I'm not as, I'm, I'm still pretty new with using Derwent's, but I have so much fun with them. I just love how they can just change a piece of fabric to be the color you want. I just add a little something to it. So right, like I said, this is gonna dry a lot lighter. So we will, we'll definitely come back to this. I'm gonna get a little bit of mustard color and I like that. Kind of blend it in with it too. It definitely doesn't last as long as the, as the inks in your foam will last. Your paintbrush and your aloe vera go pretty fast. Like I said, I wanna give this kind of a painterly effect, like a hand painted effect, not just cut fabric. So I'm kind of just doing little funny blending strokes. Gonna add a little bit of brown. That's a little more mustard than I thought it was gonna be. It's okay, I think it'll dry light. I mean, I know it will dry lighter, so I'm gonna show you. I'm just getting a little bit of brown and the yellow, kind of mixing a little more brown in there. That's pretty light. It's not, not giving me a lot of brown. So we'll just do a little bit more. Get a little more brown. I think these are so fun. If it's the look you want, maybe this isn't the look you want. Maybe you want super solid lines and this can be whatever you want. If this is your card, this is your art, you own it, right? Make it yours. But you can do this. This is super fun and easy. I'm not a professional with this. I am pretty new. I'm being super honest here. I'm pretty new at this Derwent inks. I've been watching them for a while online, different people and wanting to try them. And then we tried them in our class in the spring and I liked them. I thought they were a lot of fun. And I know you can get them in like a colored pencil as well. Um, but I thought these were more fun to use with a paintbrush. I liked it. Um, so that was probably a little bit darker there than I wanted it to be, but maybe we'll be okay. I can always come back in and and add a little more red if I want. That's the cool thing. Go a little bit goes a long way. So like do a little bit at a time and then add more if you need it, you know? Don't do not do a lot at once. Go, go a little at a time and then add more and add more if you need it. So I, I really like that. And it's gonna dry. Um, I think I need a few streaks in here to blend that a little bit. I'm gonna do a bright yellow. And I moved it again so you can't see what I'm getting. So I'll put it on her head for right now. 
and I got a lot on there so I'm gonna I wiped it off a little bit can't really show you what it's gonna look like till it's dry but I think it's turning out pretty fun so that anyway that's the my tips I have is you just keep playing with it and playing with the shadow and and you know if I want my my shadow right here to be a little bit brighter I'm going to add some orange in it I could leave it alone or I could add a little orange I'm going to add a little orange um, I think I'm going to add a little red to my orange skirt Kind of giving it some more dimension. And a little shadow in here. It doesn't have to have it, but it's kind of fun. I just love to paint. I just love playing with the with the brushes and the that's like my favorite part and so I sometimes tend to go a little overboard because it's so fun to me <laughs> so I feel like it needs a little bit of dark right here that's not the right color I'll show you again once again I moved out of the camera shot I will get a little bit of darker brown here and go a little more here so it blends in with this skirt shadow a little bit more. I want that all to blend a little bit better. So I think I'm probably good. I need to, oh, let's talk about the face. Faces can be a little intimidating. And um, so I pick. I love picking girls like this that are um, their faces are pretty simple because faces can be a little more difficult especially for me so I'm gonna get my drawing back out here if I can pull it from underneath everything and I really like how I did her eyes so I'm going to I've got a really this is called a pilot precise v7 RT it's very fine and it's a little black almost like a I want to say ballpoint but I don't think it's a ballpoint but it's a pen and um, it's just super fine so I'm gonna give her eyes are an, at an angle so I'm gonna give it a little bit I don't know if you can see my camera angle is not the best right now um, but I'm trying to get my hand not in the paint that's wet <laughs> and make her eye go off the side of her face because it is and the angle she's at and then this one is and I tested this already on the fabric of her face so I the fabric scrap that I did with her face so I knew it was the color and the the, the width of the ink that I wanted um, she kind of has a little bit of an eyebrow up here. And then just the tiniest bit of a mouth. I can hardly see it. So, but I kind of like giving her a smile. Just the tiniest little bit of a mouth. I, I kind of like it. I think once we get our hair on there, it'll look really cute. So um, I'm pretty happy with it. Now I need to get the flower in her hand and and the hair done, and we'll that'll be our next step. On this next part, I just took a piece of lace that was in my scrap bucket, glued it down, let it dry, and then I added a bunch of seed beads in differing sizes and colors that match the dress. And I used a product called Gem Tack, which is one of my favorite glues to use when doing beads on fabric quilts. Um, the next part, I'll show you how I couched her hair and the flower stem. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. 
For more like it, just hit that subscribe button below and check out the rest of our YouTube channel. You'll also find videos and tutorials on everything art quilts, whether you're just beginning or learning to enhance your skill.